Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Militant Negro Network on YouTube. I am Mr. Militant Negro. You are now at my network, a place where truth, facts, and honest thoughts and opinions are spoken. Welcome, enjoy yourselves, and please subscribe. Yesterday was the 22nd anniversary of the assassination of Minister Malcolm X. He was assassinated February 21st, 1965, and he was 39 years old. There, it is no secret that Malcolm X was one of my very few heroes. He is and was a genuine hero. Malcolm was someone whom I respected, who I followed, whom I admired, whom I can genuinely say I was a fan of his work, his life's work. Now, many Americans and many Caucasian Americans, whether they be racist, racist or non-racist, don't understand Malcolm X, don't like Malcolm X, and that's basically because of the journalistic American press, the media. How the media in America portrayed Malcolm X as a militant, as an extremist, as a racist, as a hater of all things Caucasian, when in actuality, Malcolm X was a hater of all things oppressive. He hated all things racist. Now, if you happen to be a Caucasian who was not into oppressing other people and who was not into being a racist, then Malcolm X was okay with you. He was not a lover of you if you were Caucasian because he viewed most all Caucasians as the problem in America when it came to racism because Malcolm thought that if you were not on the front lines fighting oppression and racism, if you sat at home with your head buried in the sand ignoring the racism of America during his time, he thought you were the problem and he was not incorrect in thinking that way. Many Americans who are Caucasian and call themselves not racist are helping racism because they ignore that issue. They do nothing to stop racism, to fight racism, to end racism. They figure, well, if racism doesn't affect me directly, then I don't care about it. Malcolm was against that mindset. So most of the people in America who are Caucasians don't know much about Malcolm X, his struggle, his life, his mission. They view him as a militant. Well, here's some news for you. I am a militant. Yes, that is correct. I am a militant. Basically because I studied and followed Minister Malcolm X. I am not Islamic. I am not a Muslim. I am not a member, nor have I ever been a member of the Nation of Islam. I would never follow someone like Elijah Muhammad. He had flaws. He was a womanizer. And that is exactly what my problem is with MLK. Everybody honors Martin Luther King. But Martin Luther King had flaws. He couldn't keep his penis in his pants. He fucked everything walking wearing a skirt. And in my mind, that brought him off the pedestal as a civil rights leader 
and made him a human being with flaws who should not have led the civil rights movement because people needed to follow a man with character, with scruples and morals. And that individual is, to me, in my mind, Minister Malcolm X. He had scruples and morals and standard and a very high character after converting from being a common criminal into being a leader in the nation of Islam. Now Malcolm X was not, with, was not without his flaws in the beginning of his life. He was a criminal. He did time in prison. And when he came out of prison and became a leader in the nation of Islam, he had a skewed, one-sided view on race and Caucasians. Not until he made his trip to Mecca, where he witnessed Muslims on that journey to Mecca, who happened to be of all races, cultures, and nationalities. One of the things he said that I will never forget is how he saw Muslims who were blonde haired and blue eyed worshiping the same person, deity, entity that he was worshiping, Allah. He never understood before that trip to Mecca how people with different skin color, different color eyes, different color hair, a different culture than his could be Muslim, could be praising and worshiping Allah. After the trip to Mecca, he changed. And in my mind, that is the true significance of a man or a woman. One who can change their belief system, change what they feel. One who can develop and mature and grow in their thought process after life experiences. Not many people are allowed to do that. And when I say allowed to do that, I mean they don't allow themselves to grow, to mature, to change. They have to stay the same their entire lives. Malcolm X experienced a life-changing event. He went to Mecca and he saw that his brothers and sisters who made the journey to Mecca from all over the globe were not just Negroes, Africans, people of color. These were Caucasians with blue eyes and blonde hair. There, during the trip to Mecca, praising Allah. This changed Malcolm X's perspective on life. It changed his thoughts and ideas and opinions about racism. He no longer held every Caucasian as a blue-eyed devil. He no longer thought that Caucasians were the enemy. He was a changed man. He became a better man. This is something not all people in America are ever made aware of. This is not something the media wants you to know about Malcolm X. That is why I respect the man in life and in death because he changed his perspective on human beings when his eyes were open. And the key thing with this is that he allowed his eyes to be open. So many of us, so many of us have closed minds and closed eyes on many subjects. We're brought up and raised to believe one thing, one way, and we never change that. We never allow ourselves to grow as human beings. Malcolm X did this. This video I'm doing right now is not about his life 
as a militant. It's not about his involvement in the nation of Islam. It's not about his criminal past. This video is about the man Mike Malcolm X became. Minister Malcolm X became a great man when he discovered the truth about his religion and those people who were a part of his religion. Muslims are not defined by skin color, by eye color, by the texture of their hair. They're not defined by where they live. Muslims are defined by what they do and who they are. Islam, like Christianity, is a religion. It is not the religion of terrorists. Because if we were going to name any religion a terrorist religion, that religion would have to be Christianity. And I say this based on the facts I have come across in research and investigations on the Christian religion and the horrendous mass genocide and mass murder that has been done by Christians in the name of Christianity. Back in the day of missionaries and missionary work across this globe, going back centuries, Christians have killed and murdered and massacred millions of non-believers because they were non-believers with the attempt and the agenda to push and spread Christianity as the one true religion. And the ironic thing about that is Christianity is not even the oldest or the most popular religion on this planet. So when you say Islam is a religion of terror, you are a liar or you're misinformed or misguided because that is not a fact period you don't believe it do your own research do your own investigating never take the word of anyone for what they say always prove to yourself you're either right or wrong Islam is a sacred religion and it's about any religion is really about the people who practice that religion. Religion is an inanimate object. It is not responsible for anything. It is a code by which people can live. Simple as that. The Quran, the Bible, all these things, all these books. I think the sacred book for the Jewish faith is the Torah. All these books are up to interpretation by the people who read them and follow them and use them. And therein lies the problem with religion. Human beings can take a religion and turn it into something negative, something evil, something nasty, something racist. People use religion on a daily basis to cause chaos and further their racist agenda. That is not what religion is about. Religion is about love and forgiveness and inclusion and happiness and peace of mind. And many of the people who practice religion across the world and across the board use it for evil purposes. The reason I am an admirer of Malcolm X, because he was not like that. And after his trip to Mecca, he was again a changed man. And his being a changed man is what got him assassinated. Because he could no longer support Elijah Muhammad and his infidelity and his sexual abuse of the young women in the nation of Islam. He broke with Nation of Islam over that fact. That is what got him assassinated. He was a man of his own word.
of his own thought process. He could no longer support the wrongs that were being done by the leader of the nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad. When a man dies for his convictions, that is a real man. So on this day after the 22nd anniversary of Malcolm X's assassination, I want to honor Minister Malcolm X, a.k.a. Malcolm Little, who was born May 19, 1925 in Omaha, Nebraska. He died February 21st, 1965 at age 39 in Manhattan, New York. El Haj Malik El Shabazz. May you rest in peace. I'm out of here. You guys have a great February. This is Negro History Month formerly known as Black History Month. Be well, stay safe, namaste.